Okay. Uh, good afternoon, members of the City Council, guests, members of the media who are inside this hallowed hall of the City Council. It is with uh, honor and privilege to preside the 16th regular session of the City Council of Cagayan de Oro. I therefore call to order this session. May I request everybody to rise for a short prayer to be led by Councillor Roger Jer Abadai. Uh, to be followed by the singing of the Lupang Hinirang and Cagayan de Oro March. Shall we stand? about our heads and for a moment let's feel the presence of the Lord in the name of the Father the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen Almighty and most merciful Father we thank you for today our regular session and we also Thank you, Father, for good health, sound mind, and a new life. Father, we bow before you, and we confess all our sins in thought and in deed. And we pray to you, Father, that you will send your Holy Spirit so that it will protect us, guide us, and teach us everything that you wanted us uh, to do especially during this uh, regular session and all undertakings that we may undertake during the tenure of our service as public servant. Father, we have plenty of things to ask you, especially our salvation, and we petition to you, Father, that you give it everything in a proper time in accordance with your will. And this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang pag-ibig, pero sa silahanan, alam ng puso sa liit mo'y buhay. Sa mga tatutok sa simula sa kami ko pangalawin, ay ginagawa ng mga tao sa pagkaya ng mga mahal. 
Okay, uh, balikun ko mayong hapon sa tanan. Uh, the Vice Mayor, our Vice Mayor and Presiding Officer, Bibut Rodriguez uh, is not with us this afternoon because she is attending an official meeting. And uh, as practice and part of our tradition, Yesterday, I think, was the birthday of our uh, beautiful counselor, Gurley Blaba. And uh, so, as I said, it is part of our tradition to greet the celebrant with a birthday song. And this time, I would like to request Counselor James Judith <laughs> to lead the singing of the birthday song. Mr. Chair, pagapaka ako pero kanta lang yapon. I give a singing na kuna. Sundog, sundog. One, two, three. May I request everyone, everybody to please rise. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy pastor, pastor, to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. So with feelings. Ngano dili niya gakamention ang alan sa birthday celebrant. On on behalf of the Twentieth City Council, malipayong adlaw sa pagkamukso konsihal girly balaba. Lahat ng mas dama. So with that, accomplish. We will recognize the our majority floor leader. Oh no, sorry. May I request the secretary to call the roll and to determine whether there is a quorum? Honorable Jocelyn B. Rodriguez, City Vice Mayor and Presiding Officer on Official Business. For the First District Councilors, Honorable, Honorable Agapito Eriberto G. Swan, Honorable Roger G. Abaday, Honorable J.R. Pascual, Honorable Aimee Rose P. Moreno, Honorable Romeo V. Calizo, Honorable George S. Goking in this post, Honorable Jose Pepe S. Abu Jr., Honorable Malvern A. Esparcia. For the Second District Councilors, Honorable Evona Yaseni B. Imano, Honorable Maria Lourdes S. Gaani, Honorable Jolene Mercedes L. Balaba, Honorable James K. Jureth II, Honorable Aaron Mark Kinakaya, Honorable Edgar S. Cabanlas, Presiding Officer Pro Tempore, and Honorable Christian Rostico M. Achas, Honorable Suzette G. Magtahas Daba. For the ex-officio members, Honorable Yan Lam S. Lim, Liga ng Mga Barangay President, and Honorable John Michael Arseno, City SK Federation President. There is quorum, Madam Presiding, uh, Mr. Presiding Officer. There being a quorum, the City Council can now proceed with its business. I would like to recognize uh, the Honorable Ayan Mark Nakaya, the Majority of Law Leader, and of course, recognize at the proper time the Minority of Law Leader, Honorable James Judith. Thank you, uh, Mr. Presiding Officer. Okay, that's it. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. That's the style of the new presiding officer. With your new hairdo, that's that's how responsive the presiding officer is. Anyway, Mr. Presiding Officer, good afternoon, and to our colleagues of the City Council, friends from the media, fellow kagayanons, mayong hapon. 
I move, Mr. Presiding Officer, Councillor Edgar S. Cabanlas, to dispense with the reading of the minutes of meeting on October 10, 2022. There's a motion to dispense the reading of the minutes of the previous session. Any second? Any objection? There being no objection, the same is hereby approved. I likewise move for the uh, approval of the said minutes of meeting. The, there's a motion. And duly seconded, there being no objection, the same is approved. Thank you, Mr. Presiding Officer. Uh, perhaps before we proceed to the special report uh, portion, uh, we, the City Council of uh, Cagayan de Oro, have approved a resolution acknowledging a certain uh, personality uh, way back uh, in his uh, steadfast uh, uh, leadership. And uh, because of that, uh, Mr. Presiding Officer, uh, this fellow, this uh, officer in uniform is uh, present in our midst. If, with the kind of indulgence of uh, the members of our colleagues, mm. may we uh, suspend the rules and uh, allow this fellow and ask uh, Councillor uh, General Romeo Cal Calizo to uh, uh, give background uh, to this fellow and uh, the City Council also prepared the resolution that we have approved uh, in the earlier session. I move to suspend the rules. Second. So there is a motion to suspend the rules to allow uh, non-members of the City Council to speak before, before us. The same is hereby approved. And may I request uh, General Caliso, Kagawad Caliso, to say something on the issue. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Presiding Officer. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to, to my colleagues, the members of the 20th uh, City Council, their guests, those viewing over the social media, friends, may hapon ka natong tanan. It is uh, my singular honor and pleasure to introduce a pride of this city, Cagayan de Oro City. The person who is our guest uh, this afternoon was born in Iligan City. But uh, before he became an officer, he grew up here in Cagayan de Oro. He started his uh, early life in Barangay Patag. Walay pabor pabor, ako siyang kabarangay. And if you look into his scholastic records, his uh, early preparations in school were all done in Xavier University. Elementary, high school, and he spent two years in the College of Engineering before entering the Philippine Military Academy. After four years, he graduated as a member of class 1996 of the same institution. Since then, after graduation, he joined the, the Philippine Navy, the special unit of the Philippine Navy, special command, the Philippine Marines. So he started as a junior officer. And if you look into his military personal file, because this MPF will show the details of the biography of a military personnel, especially the officer, during his stint in the military. And if you look into his records, he has gone through all positions that makes him a well-rounded officer. Started as the platoon leader and gone through different levels of command both as a, as a uh, combat commander, a logistics officer, a training officer, 
an administrative officer and a planning officer that makes him well-rounded ladies and gentlemen and uh, if you look into his, his scholastic records as the in the military he has gone through all career courses necessary for him to reach the rank that he is in now and I can see in his uh, scholastic record some peculiar courses just like aside from uh, the, uh, uh, the the traditional courses that uh, will support his promotion he is a graduate of uh, the International Logistics Executive Advanced Development course in Newport, Rhode Island, USA. So that makes him a good administrator of logistics. And uh, in the civilian side, I don't know why he chose Masters in Physical Education. And this he used during his stint as the commander of the battalion in Sulu province where he used the football for peace so there was a clear shift in paradigm Dili Nagera it's now through sports and it came to a point that even the last marathon was held with the route using the circumferential road of the Sulu province so this guy is one of those who instituted the clear shift, not only in paradigm, but clear shift in concepts. With this, uh, my friends, he has uh, gained several awards. Ako na yung Bastahon ng awards. Siguro, mga isa ka oras na ni Bastahon. So I will uh, just... Uh, uh, highlight the salient features of uh, his accomplishments. He is an awardee of the third highest award in the military, the Distinguished Service Star, and he has two of these. He has been an awardee of the Gold Cross Medal. That means he is a, a, a veteran campaigner in combat. And uh, lately, because of his uh, exploits in peacemaking, he was chosen by, uh, the, by a, a certain group headed by Lambang to be one of the 10 outstanding Filipinos. And he has been given due recognition in several local government units in Palawan, in Sulu, and in Manila. And he has been interviewed so many times by CNN just because of this accomplishment, ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, before his present position, he has been the operations officer of the Western Command. Western Command is the command is responsible in the defense of our maritime domain in the West Philippine Seas. Uh, it's really hard to defend the West Philippine Seas. Uh, earlier, Councillor Pascual was asking, what's the difference between the uh, uh, Philippine uh, Marines, Philippine Navy, or the Philippine Coast Guard? Kaya naman siya mga amigo. He's the reservist actually of the Philippine Air Force. I said, uh, Philippine Coast Guard, who is uh, in charge of uh, enforcement of our maritime laws? The Philippine Marines is in charge of defending the uh, maritime domain of the Philippines. So, muna pagka may difference, no? And uh, our guest this afternoon has been in charge of planning, in the planning and operations, in the defense of the West Philippine Seas, which is now an uh, issue in contention. And tungod kay nakitan man sa Malacanya nga maayo iyang performance right now, my friends, he is designated 
as uh, one of those think tanks of the National Task Force on Ending the Local Communist Armed Conflict. He is now assigned with the office of the president. So it's really a pride that Kagendoro has a person like him. So now uh, he has with him his family, his parents, Pastor Sani Kabanlit, please stand uh, Sani, no? Pastor Sani Kabanlit, and uh, Mrs. Kabanlit, si Kuya Ala, si Ate. Pastor Kabanlit was also one, once upon a time, a soldier of the year awardee. He is also a retired army officer. So, Kabanlit, nagandang utana. How is he related to the Kabanlits here in uh, Tagendoro? Yato mga parente. And uh, of course, with him now is uh, his one and only wife, Dr. Ella Kabanlit. Yeah, Dr. And uh, they, are, they are blessed with three sons now. The uh, eldest is now in Australia making a living. With uh, them now are the two sons. Please stand uh, So, puro lalaki. So, uh, to show their support and their pride also to uh, a man like our guest of honor this uh, afternoon, they accompanied uh, him. Now, uh, without much ado, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's again my uh, singular honor to present to you in person, Colonel Stephen L. Cabanlet, Philippine Navy Marines. Uh, can we, uh, so, uh, the, uh, the Mr. Chairman, the, here yes. is now Colonel uh, Stephen. Welcome to the City Council, uh, Colonel, and we are proud of you, of what you are, who you are, and your achievement as a military officer. You have given honor to the city and to the people of Kagayan Yoro. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you also for this time and the recognition given to me. Uh, the, the procedure here is uh, we will uh, present the, the uh, resolution of uh, recognition to our guest, Colonel Gavanlit. And uh, I would like to request everybody to, to be here in front. Together we will present the, 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 the resolution to him. And uh, after that we will have a photo ops. And uh, yes, uh, my minority floor leader, James Judith. Mr. Chair, I would just like to take advantage nga, on a personal note. Colonel Stephen Lalas Kabanlit was my classmate, uh, was my batchmate and classmate. So I would like to go down memory lane and ask Colonel Kabanlit, kung unsa to yung mga section sa uh, elementary pa mi, para makuan bagyod. What was your section, Colonel Kabanlit, when you were still in kinder? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Let, let, let's not uh, go to the... the People just... The, the, I just the, like the, to go down line. memory lane because <laughs> I, I could recall we were yes. classmates in several sections, but mm. I, I cannot remember specifically mm. which section or which year level. Uh, so the, I'd the, like to ask Colonel Cabanlit yeah. which section... The next section question, Mr. Chairman, would be what row? No, no, no. Uh, just <laughs> just in the elementary Colonel years. Junior. Just the <laughs> elementary years, uh, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Okay. So, what section what in kinder? Down? Ma. What was your section, Colonel Kabanlit, in, in kinder? Uh, your Honor, Kinder B. Okay, R. Uh, grade 1, Mabilis. Mabilis. Grade 2, Eagle. Eagle, your classmates. Grade, grade three. 3, Lamb. Were you Lamb? Lamb. Yes. Grade 4, Cougar. 4, Cougar. Grade 5, Nara. Nara. And grade 6, Bonifacio. Alright, we were classmates in 2 and... Four. High school, 1P, ah, 2M, 
3H and 1Q, 2N, 3I, and 4B. We were and 4, 4D. And, and yes, I think we were seatmates in the, the, the latter year. So, in a personal note, Mono, dakong kalipay nako o ikapasigar mo, Mr. Chair, Colonel Stephen Lalas Cabanet was my classmate, my batchmate, and my seatmate. Kaghang <laughs> salamat. Okay, so... Which one? Which one? Uh, with that, uh, okay, so tapok tadi ya sa tumbangan. Okay. Okay. It is our distinct honor and uh, privilege, the Sangguniang Panglungsod of Cagayan de Oro, uh, for having the presence of uh, Colonel Stephen uh, Cabanlit. Uh, GSC, Philippine Navy Marines. And because of your outstanding uh, service to the uh, uh, government and to our people and bringing honor and name of uh, Cagayan de Oro, uh, on the August 15, 2022, Councilora Romeo Calizo proposed to the City Council recognizing uh, your distinct uh, honor. And uh, may I read resolution number 14246, that's 2022. Office of the City Council. In the 20th City Council, Sangguniang Panglungsod of Cagayan de Oro, City Councilor Romeo V. Caliso for himself submitted the following resolution, which was considered an approved resolution commending and congratulating Cagayanon Colonel Stephen L. Cabanlit, GSC, Philippine Navy Marines, for being awarded as one of the 2022 Metro Bank Foundation Outstanding Filipinos thereby giving honor and pride to Cagayan de Oro City, its officials and residents. Whereas Colonel Stephen L. Cabanlit, PNMGSC, the Assistant Chief of Unified Command Staff for Operations, U3 of Western Command, was among the awardees of the prestigious 2022 Metrobank Foundation Outstanding Filipinos. Whereas Colonel Cabanlit is best, best known for pioneering the football for peace program in Sulu province in 2011 when he was the operations officer of a marine battalion where the program encouraged the youth to engage in sports, thus promoting peaceful coexistence, camaraderie, teamwork, sportsmanship, and discipline. Whereas other AFP units then adopted the program of Colonel Cabanlit in other parts of the country, which veered the youth away from joining lawless groups. In 2017, the European Union, during the Asian Regional Forum on Violent Extremism, held in Brazil's Belgium, 
recognize the said program as an effective tool in preventing and countering violent extremism. Whereas, it is only proper and fitting for this Council to give its official cognizance, praise and accolade to Colonel Cabanlit for his exemplary accomplishment. Wherefore, on motion by Councillor Romeo V. Calizo, duly seconded by Councillor Jose Pepe B. Abo Jr. and Yevona Yasin B. Imano, be it resolved to commend and congratulate Cagayanon Colonel Stephen L. Cabanlit, GSC, Philippine Navy Marines, for being an awarded as one of the 2022 Metrobank Foundation Outstanding Filipinos, thereby giving honor and pride to Cagayan de Oro City, its official and residents. Resolve further to forward this resolution to Colonel Stephen L. Cabanlit, this city, for his information. Unanimously adopted. Signed by His Honor, the City Vice Mayor, Presiding Officer, Jocelyn B. Rodriguez, and uh, the original of this resolution was also certified by the City Secretary and the entire membership of the Council. Congratulations. I may request uh, the members of the family of Colonel uh, Cabanli to come. Oh, the family? Family Alimo. Participated also in the 2000 campaign sa Tampa Bumacal. Puro critical areas. And then... Ang general na. <laughs> Ngayon, ang likely is the West Philippine Sea. So I conceptualized the fishing diplomacy. More uh, uh, na hindi masyadong nabigyan pa. Okay, white to white is the ano, eh, gray and white. And we don't, need, we don't need submarine and... We just need to enhance our fishing laws. Diplomatic ang imo. Ah, diplomatic. Taga dito. Taga dito. Ah, yung uncle si Oka Salcedo. Building. Apa? Salcedo masya. Guangco. Sige sige. Guangco kay Kapilido. Guangco. Di Guangco, sir. Ma Guangco. ก็จะปิกเจอร์ซะเอ่อมาเลี้ยงซะปาราอีกคนหนึ่งซะปาร์สมิดสปัตส์สปัตส์สปัตส์อ่าแล้วไปกับตรงอ๋อทำตรงจ
o uh, salamat sa honor dungog nga inyong gihatag sa atong dakbayan o sa katawan ini. We will wait for the majority floor leader. <laughs> so, majority floor leader, Honorable Ayan Mark Nakaya, we can now proceed with the business of the day. Thank you, Mr. Presiding Officer. I move to uh, lift the suspension of the rules. Suspension is lifted. Again, congratulations to uh, Colonel Kabanlit. Thank you. And to the entire family. Congratulations. Uh, we have four members of the council who would like to render their respective special reports, uh, Mr. Presiding Officer. First, as listed, is uh, Councillor James K. Judith, the second, as regards uh, the implementation of the Mega Dyke Project in the area of Barangay Consolacion, the city. Second is Councillor Malburn A. Esparcia on the UNICEF's research study about auto automobile accidents as leading cause of death among people under the age of 19 years old. Next is uh, to be included is uh, Councillor uh, John Michael Seno on the hospital requirement that has missed by uh, some of our hospitals, public and private. And uh, Councillor Roger Abadai, he wouldn't want to make this special report because it's personal, but uh, he would like to uh, make it public so that uh, others would not uh, uh, fall trapped in a scam of a delivery of uh, products. So, councillors Judith, Isparsha, Seno, and Abade. So, we will recognize first the councillor James Judith for his special report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, the problem is not really a problem. The problem becomes a problem if we do not find a solution to the problem itself. Mr. Chair, Councillor Edgar Cabanlas, atong Majority Floor Leader, Ayan Mark Nakaya, akong tinahod ng mga kauban sa konseho, atong mga bisita, king sakpan sa prensa nga nasa likod nga bahin sa atong gallery, atong pinanggang katawhan sa nakbayan sa Cagayan de Oro, sa inyong tanan maupay. Mabandayan ninyo sa inyong tagsa-tagsa, nasa inyong tagsa-tagsa ka agenda book na sa ikaduhang panid na tatak diha o nahipatik ang akong special report kabahin sa gitawag ng Megadike labi na gidiya sa konsolasyon ng bahin ni ini. Gawas sa coastal road nga nagsumpay sa atong dakbayan sa lungsod sa upol. Kining Megadike, muna ni ang pinakadako, pinakamahal, pinakapatsyada nga proyekto sukad-sukad sa tibuok kasaysayan sa atong dakbayan. Dili lang ni siya Megadike, kundili Boulevard, Dalan, o Tulay. Kini siya magsugod din sa may J.R. Borja Bridge. Ang iyang pikas tampi, ang iyang tumoy, lain nga tumoy dito sa approach sa puntod Kauswagan Bridge. Hinay-hinay bali ang iyang pagsumpay-sumpay ani by pacing. Diya nagsugod sa J.R. Borja Bridge. Nadilatar pa man gani kini tungod sa duha ka tuig nga pandemya. Apan karon niabot na sila sa diha sa may konsolasyon, ah, konsolasyon nga barangay. Nasayod man siguro kitang tanan nga ang konsolasyon pag-abot diya sa Mega Dike na bahin natabas sa duha ka piraso. Literal kay nawala man gani ang iyang gitawag nato barangay hall ang og covered court kay girelocate na sila kay tungod na ginabahin. Og og sa likod nga bahin diha sa ilang barangay hall or kaniya ay asa ilang barangay hall na ato mga kaigsuonan diha mga lumulupyo sa managadaiyang mga isla quote in quote na ay isla bugnaw, isla kupa, isla delta, isla baksan. Ang atong pagahisgutan karon mao ang mga residente nga naapektuhan sa Mega Dike diha sa may isla baksan. Kung mabantayan, Mr. Chair, gani sa ato ning committee ba, nakapaingon, sa Committee on Urban Poor, kung mabantayan, 
Ang ilang reklamo, ina nilang. Kay tuod na anaman bali ang katong mega dike. Gitagaan sila walay lalis na sila ay access ramp sa mao baling habog kayo nga nga project. Unya ang maong access ramp kay layo kayo sa asa nagtapok ang ilang mga kabalayan. Kung makaadto manggali sila sa ilang access ramp taud-taud or layo-layo pagyud ang ilang pagabaktason, posible pagali nga pangkurikongon sila o pangdapawan kay tungod dapaw man ang ilang agianan. O ang ilang agianan nga sa ubos nga bahin sa maong project, murag spillway na labi na karon nga naay kanunay nga hulga sa dautan or kulismaot nga panahon, posible nga mutaas ang tubig, mga lumos sila o madakinas. O kung na baguhay panggaling na aba manggali dalagita nga malugos na unta may gani kay nakakaratil siya nakasibat siya sa mga kamot sa suspect o kung makaabot manggaling atong mga kaigsuunan dia sa isla baksan dia sa may access ramp didto sa ibabaw gyud sa may gadaik layo kung imo tanahon pwede na gud nila malantawan ang ilang barangay hall pero moadto pa sila dito sa may junction sa Iglesia ni Cristo, liko aron dito sila backline na pod pabalik dito sa ilang barangay hall sa konsolasyon. Walay lalis na aman tuod sila access ramp, pero mao lagi layo manggod ang kikabutangan ni ini. Ang ilang hangyo nga pwede ba nga matagaan sila access ramp? Natagaan man sila access ramp. Na ay access ramp gidesign ang atong gobyerno, ang atong pagagamanan. Ang problema lang lagi na sayod man kitang tanan nga abtan patag siam-siam kanus ang maimplementar ang maong access ramp. Mo na ang ilang hangyo kanato Mr. Chair sa Committee on Urban Poor nga gawas atong aprobado nga design sa ila baling access ramp. Pwede ba nga matagaan sila temporary nga access ramp. Mo ilang gipangayo. Busa kita sa atong quick response team, sa atong buhatan, sa Councilor James Judith II, nag-aksyon diritso nga pangitaag solusyon ang atong mga kaigsunan diha. Kay dili na to pwede ikatugot nga magdugay pa sila diha nga naakanunay ang hulga sa dautan nga panahon. Ang dugang nga mga detalye ni ini, naa sa atong og dugang mga detalye og tao na sa atong ABP. Boss Torks, take it away. Na, na, na. na. O, paki, paki zoom in or paki enlarge bali sa screen. Zoom in, zoom out. Money. Sampai Kaya nagdesign, magkawal, walang may lalis na may didesign nila na 
akses ako ng tawag ni Pedro, wala pa matutoy pa kaya sila ata. Kaya dapat sila ka na ibang masigit-sigit. Kaya nakulong pa kaya sila katutong ati. So, ako siya niyo ba, kung talaga tutukod ba niya kung mo, kung layo pa may lalis, parang akses ra. Nakamulang yan niyo, yan niya sa katawan, ako ba niya sila ni itamangan niya. Ito ba niyo na ay temporary? Original nga access ram na dito sa nakatumoy, di na niyo makita. So layo ilang gagian. Yan magluno pa na dia, Councilor Seno, posible pa sila malumos. Ito pa man dito sa tumoy nga bahin. Ba, so, 
Sa lagtun nga pagkasturya, Mr. Chair, atong napangitaag solusyon o kasulbaran ang problema o mulo sa atong katawan sa Isla Baksan, Barangay Konsolasyon. So, balik ko na ako, subli de, atong pagpasalamat sa Toyo Construction, sa Japanese Consultancy Firm, ang OCG Oriental Consultancy Group, ang si Engineer Kasunuri Inoye, si Engineer Hill Itoralde, Engineer Jimmy Jimenez, Engineer June Padla, ang mga barangay officials, labi na kang barangay Kapitan Alexander Ligtas sa barangay Konsolasyon, ang atong mga residente diya, ang atong mga kauban, o kanimo, Mr. Chair, Councilor Edgar Cabanla, sa imong pagsalig ka na ako, nga ako na gisangon ni mo ka na ako, ang mong problema bali sa barangay Konsolasyon, so ato kaning gisulbat. Sa pagtapos, Mr. Chair, matod pa sa Osaka, panultihon. Coming together is a beginning, staying together is progress, and working together is success. Dinira kukutog, dagang salamat, asdang kagayan di oro. Uh, okay. Ha? Ang ito, talo siya ito yung iya. You know, ah, Uh, Salamat kayo, uh, Councilor James Judith. Pero next time, kita mga konsyal, mag-report kita sa ito mga accomplishment. Hindi na ito yagi sa mga naning mga vlogs. Okay. Of course, kita, tanda kita, I think everybody has been uh, serving the people in their small way. Naku, every time nga maghata kita, gina na nga, ato di plaster din ni. Uh, I mean, uh, This is not the forum to do that. Uh, but uh, we recognize the achievement and the efforts of our uh, fellow counselor. But as I said, kaya nang ato mga blogs, kita naman tayo ng blogs, kaya na lang naibot ng Facebook. Sa ato din ni report. Direct, concise, specific report. Nga mukha na, nahimun na ito ni, salamat kayo kayo. Uh, we have all the time. Kaya kita, amigo mata, tarawang ko lang dito sa Facebook. So, that would be uh, the coming from me, an advice na ano ito, mga tagtagbugas dito sa itong mga silingan, ito, nangabaan. You don't have to come here and present you what you, what you have done. Kaya mahurot itong panahon na na. Magkuntis kita kasi dagan na itong natabangan. Mo ba? Mo ba itong gusto din eh? So, let's have a concise report, and uh, we will appreciate what, you, what uh, we have done. But, uh, yeah, one lang, para nga ma-share na to ang atong time. So, thank you very much, uh, Councilor Judith. Kay ako pa siyang itong chairman sa committee, uh, nagpasalik in town siya, nga siya ay matiman dito. On, uh, we, we are very glad nga iya ka nang giatiman, natagaan giyod. Kaya lagi uh, kinahalan, sa, kinahalan sa mga tao. And we appreciate that. Second reporter, Councilor Bernie Bitok Bitok. Oh. Ah? May question. Question lang. Question. Ah, question. Ah, eh, ako. Ah, gusto. Nababasing na pa yung mag-commit ito. Sarga. Good afternoon, Mr. Presiding Officer. Uh, Mutana lang ko, no? Uh, kinimang kong megadike, no? Ang purpose ani is aron maprotektahan ang ato ang uh, mga areas, no? From the kining uh, wat water sa uh, river. Muna na ang megadike. Karon ako lang ipangutana na kini bang mga residente nga iyahang gi uh, gi uh, gadtuan sa ato ang uh, special reporter kung kini ba sila namuyo ba ni sila sa sulod didto sa tungat tung na didto sa area na sa river which as far as i know no dili sila pwede diha mo puyo kay mo gani nang uh, gibutangan nag mega dike para dito na na sila sa dili sila maigo sa baha no o gihangyo na na sa city government nga i-relocate kana sila nagpabilin lang gihapon sila na sa sulod 
and for as long as naa sila diha namuyo, no, and we tolerate that, biligro yun na ilahang kinabuhi diya. Kung ato nang i-uragi, ginakundo na ito, nga diha, ras sila mamuyo, uh, malukong sila, ras sila kanang matrap. Kung na ay uh, dako nga uh, ulan, no, kanang bagyo, malukong yun sila diya sa sulod. Maski unsa na nga access route, access route ng buhato na ito, um, pag naagyod to ang kining dako nga flash flood flash flood wipe out na sila diha mo nang kinahang lang yun na sila i-relocate pero until now wala pa na sila nasugot ata na magpa-relocate so uh, ako lang suggestion is uh, nga nung uh, gihangyo naman na to na sila no na uh, i-relocate sa mga relocation areas okay, okay. uh magtinulura na may ani kay Pa kun lang siya mutubag. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Kini tinod na nga observation. Gani usa nga na sa butang among gi sultig yod sa mga tawo nga. Kung amo ka nang buhaton, ato ka nang buhaton nga butangan na to gramp dia or hagdan ba. So that means nga basi gi tolerate na to sila dia pagpuyo. An sigurado kita nga delikado sila dia. Delikado good kay kung unay baha, uh, grabe good, may igot ka sila. Pero ingon sila nga, mudagan na sila kung unay baha. But anyway, uh, complicated ka na kay nga ang uh, issue diha. Na, na, na ay sitwasyon nga, uh, dili sila mahawa kaya wak sila mataga eh sa relocation. Ikadwa, di sila mahawa kay wa sila bayri nya napagud ang uban dia dili qualified ngano sigun sa lista sa chud ang lista sa chud pagsugod nya nang dike pagsugod nya nang dike nag survey ang chud sa mga tawo nga naa sa sulod between sa river and the dike wala sila ang uban dia wala sa lista that means nga bag-on na lang na sila ni sulod dia So, naglisod ang chod hasta ang DPWH. Kung sa'yo buhaton, di sila mo qualify sa bayad kay bago naman lang sila. Di sila sila mo qualify sa relocation kay lagi di man sila mga daan diya nga residente before sa pag-construct sa dahil. So, kung sa'yo may solusyon, ang solusyon is uh, wala. Atong buhaton is magulat na lang kita nga alang-alang ato sila sila ang pagguyuron. So, ang akong gisuggest sa chud nga tagaan sila og temporary shelter kanang mga dili qualified nga mo nga mo balhin dito bas pagatpat. Second option, bayran sila. Bayran sila. Na in, nagmureklamo ang tuyo, ang, ang, Jap ang Japanese consultant, hasta ang mga kontraktor nga, hasta ang chud nga wala mati legal basis sa pagbayad. Wala may legal basis. Pero ang akong sulti nga, ang tuyo at ang DPWH na may pundo, kubiyari na lang na ninyo. Kaya may raman na kayo, aram mati na sila mag napulo kabuk dyan. Pitur mati na sila kabuk, kamay ragi na sila. So, ato na lang isakrifisyo kaysa mabot ang panahon ng mga anod na sila dyan. Na, But in the meantime, nga ito ka nagasulbaron, mula gito naghangyo sila, nagsulbad ni Councilor Judith, nga in the meantime, para kuno kung doon emergency, na ilang magamit nga ramp, doon sa ilang mga balay, kaysa mudakin pa sila dito sa layo. Muna niyang, you know, ang human nuances sa atong katiling bansu. Complicado. Yes? Yes, Councilor Judith. Uh, just for the information of the Mr. Chair, na ay approved na nga design ang Japanese consultancy firm o ang UPMO nga magbutang yun o kining access ramp. Katong ato maling ipakita sa special report, temporary yun lang access ramp. Dito na po abay ang approved na permanent design sa access ramp. Pero as to the legalities, Mr. Chair, sa antecedent sa ilang pagpuyod diha, 
Ang nasayod yun, mas competent ang, ang chair yun. Kay, sa imo man itong uh, committee ba, Mr. Chair, wala ko kabalo sa mga factual and legal antecedents or background. Okay, kay, ang chud, sige nang ingon nga, ilagin ipapawa. Uh, Amo lagi na, complicated. So, let us just wait. Wait. Kita. Yes, girly, napay mong gusto isulti. Member mong ko sa Committee on Urban Board. <laughs> uh, Pasilo ako, uh, Mr. Chair, no, kay uh, wala ko ga-attend sa inyong meeting. Pero mangayo lang sa pud ko o kining, uh, uh, I don't know kung na-discuss na sa, in, sa committee meeting, sa committee level, kining pilakabok pamilya ang naadiha karon sa uh, kining isla baksan. baksan? baksan. Pila ka o pila ka pamilya. Oh, gamay rin kayo. Uh, kay may dumduman ako nga uh, katung nag-start na no right after the typhoon katung sendong nag uh, nag uh, nay project kanang mega dike project ihap na na sila gitagaan yes. na sila og relocation mm, yes, na uh, houses na units uh, mga 900 families uh. 700 fa families karon na uh, nawala na tong 700 families pagkapila ka kay ongoing pa man pud ang construction pagkapila ka tuig ni abot na inuon 900 na pud ka pamilya kay lain na pud ang naa dito na muyo yes. mm, so mo nang ginaingon na gina na balik yes. ba, perennial ang the vicious cycle mm -mm. nga uh, so, nasulbad na nato ang na relocate na nato ang 700 og na kay duha man nakaklase Relocation or payment? Ang uban gusto relocation. Ang uban gusto payment. Gabayaran na nato Millions and millions of pesos using the money of the DPWH. Pero in the, in the period of the construction, na yung kapanulun. Namun ka na itong problema. Yes, uh, Councilor Roger. Pasumpay lang eh, Mr. Chair. Salamat. Um, hmm. Uh, so with regards to the report of uh, Councillor Judith, no, we were there. We are having our actual inspection together with the committee chairman of uh, engineering, mm. and I came to interview these people. Ako ng pumutana. Ano niya paman mo din nga? Wak ba mo maapil sa relocation? Amor man tung ginikanan sir. Do anana sila sa kwat. Na kamo day. Amulat lang din ni sir kung. Delikado kayo, very dangerous judge. Kaya, nakong anong niyaman mo din, no build zone mo niya. Hulat pa lang sila sa ilang kwan daw. Kanusa sila papawaon. Pero, nakong delikado man. So, I think there's a need to, kano, to investigate properly, no? Kaya, requiring the contractor to build another kwan is, I think, makaingon niya sila sa ato nga, wala man ni Kabalo siguro, Balawan din atong mga member city council. Kayo they are uh, uh, telling us to build another for this purpose. Nga, diba? So I think uh, we have to examine, uh, uh, to scrutinize properly before requiring that uh, contractor to... Kwano. There are few, uh, pure man sila there, no? Pero, uh, so I think that should be investigated properly. Uh, okay, so uh, with that... Uh Note, uh, we'd like to uh, refer this matter, uh, this report of Councillor James Judith to the Committee on Urban Poor for uh, proper recording, consideration, and disposal. So next, uh, wala na? Next uh, reporter, Councillor Bernie Sparsia. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Attorney Edgar Cabanlas. I'll make this quick, Attorney. Ako mga kauban, uh, nasa atong media, may uh, maying hapong ka natong tanan. Akong special report is on UNICEF's research study which found road crash accidents to be the leading cause of death of the young people. Mr. Chair, uh, last September 28, this year, the United Nations Children's Fund or UNICEF Philippines visited the office of the Vice Mayor. Actually, all of us were also invited pero medyo nabisi ta ito mga panahon na. So some of the uh, members of the 20th City Council were there also. UNICEF discussed with us that there are 
three tulo kayo who die every day due to road accidents. Moreover, we learned that UNICEF desires the local government of Cagayan de Oro City will adopt effective child road safety measures. This is also uh, timely, Mr. Chair, kay magbalik na raba ang atong face-to-face uh, -face classes uh, pag November. According to the World Health Organization, children have higher vulnerabilities to road traffic injuries because of physical and development limitations. They are less able to see over or beyond obstructions and have difficulty in estimating the speed of approaching vehicles. Furthermore, according to the Global Road Safety Facility on the Philippines Road Safety Country Profile, 77% of road crash fatalities and injuries are in the econom economically productive age groups 15 to 64 years old. In addition, UNICEF, uh, UNICEF reports that every day, injuries that could have been avoided kill more than 1,600 children and teenagers worldwide under the age of 19. So, ubo sa 19 anyos. The most common cause of death from these injuries is the automobile accidents. Gakabanggaan sa kadalanan. In the same vein, in our 1987 Philippine Constitution, Section 5, Article 2 mandates the maintenance of peace and order, the protection of life, liberty, and property, and the promotion of the general welfare are essential for the enjoyment by all the people of the blessings of democracy. Mr. Chair, allow me to show some videos na nakuha sa among team. Dili ni siya vlog, uh, Mr. Chair. Kuha lang, ganang actual ni siya ng mga schools na ito nakita dali sa Cagayan de Oro City. This one is uh, the West City Center School. Doon nakita na ito, nga naa siya ay medyo uh, overpass. Uh, lately lang na nga morag barricade. So, medyo mapugos yun nga ang mga parents o ang mga estudyante. Dapat mugamit yun anang pila ka millions na nga overpass. Again, that's West City Central School, Mr. Chair. Ah, yeah, correct. West City Central School is uh, in Carmen. Then... Pwede ba mag-click gamay lang para mas ma-forward lang gamay? Sorry. Sige pa. Wala. Wala yung vlog. <laughs> this one, Mr. Chair, is the City Central School. Also one of the uh, schools nga diretso, automatic, at bang ang atong uh, the, the, the Vela Street, that City Central School. Okay. Pag-skip na lang din gamay. Then... Another one is the Kilometer 5 Elementary School. Uh, sa atong obserbahan, sometimes na ay uh, RTA, pero sa hay na tayo malap yan, nga medyo gapatintero yun. Next, please. Forward. And uh, next... Forward. Lumbia Elementary School. There. Uh, nindot kayo ang uban mga schools, kaya mga barricades. So at least medyo makapugong ang mga drivers na makalahos. And again, we appreciate nga natay mga traffic enforcers. Some of them are RTA, some of them are, I think, employees from the barangay. And also, Makasandig Elementary School. Kung tanawin ninyo, paggawas, automatic, medyo ano din. BC Street. Next. We also have... Forward. Of course, Mogs. Pinaka-usa sa pinaka-busy, pinaka-dako na itong school. Nga medyo paggawas ni mo, Vela Street na. Delikado kaya pong kayo. And uh, lastly, 
Uh, I think muna ba ng last na to? Okay, that's it. Again, uh, wala sa wala na mo na kwaig video pero again akong akong utrohon uh, several public and private schools particularly the basic education learning institutions are located near the highway where there where there appears to be an increase in traffic during the reporting and dismissal of the students. Just a handful come to mind again Lapasan National High School, Bulwa Central School, Kilometer 5 Elementary School, Xavier University Grade School, Junior and Senior High School, Corpus Christi School, three of which are found in Uptown along Masterson's Avenue. Additionally, Central Schools like Agayan de Oro City Elementary Central School, Moogs and West City Central School that connects uh, that connect K Road Road networks are situated in densely populated areas with heavy traffic. In line of this development, and the impending complete adoption of in-person classes, I am proposing a resolution to review the status of our traffic management in front of the schools, particularly those that are close to highways. And uh, it is worth uh, noting that in front of the schools located along the highway, there would be severe traffic congestion caused by the entrance and the exit of students, parents, legal guardians, teachers, and school personnel. This congest uh, congestion would need to be mitigated and the traffic would need to be managed properly. The movement of the general population across the road network must be as efficient, safe, unobstructed, and orderly as is reasonably possible for their safety, particularly at schools close to highways and in densely populated areas of the city. The status of traffic management at schools near highways and the presence of traffic enforcers need to be assessed and re-evaluated in order to di diminish built-up areas in the city. By the time the in-person training is fully implemented, many kids will be crossing the street and will be require assistance from our reputable traffic aids and enforcers. My primary concern, Mr. Chair, is the safety of our city and preventing traffic accidents. Finally, last part na again. Let us revisit the CDO traffic code to see if there are mandates that CDO RTA personnel must be present in those areas that will render proper traffic management. I would also like to propose the implementation of road safety drills in all basic education institutions, private man or public, to help children develop their skills on road safety. According to Ms. Sarah Handang, Senior Education Specialist from the Department of Education Division Office of Zamboanga, road safety drill is equally important doing fire drills and earthquake drills. This concludes the discussion, Mr. Chair. I appreciate your attention. O sa tanan mga naminaw, dagang salamat. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Bernie. Uh, ini... Interpolation or comments or Councillor uh, Roger Baday. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Sir Presiding Officer, my colleagues in the Twentieth uh, City Council, and all people who are watching us uh, in the online and here in the gallery, Mayong Hapun. Now I have also a research in consonance with the reporter about uh, unintentional accidents or death no? children below 0 to 19 years old now according to UNICEF and World Health Organization that uh, children in low income countries are significant factors for unintentional death or injury especially those inequality of income kasagara manggod ang mga uh, to mga mga estudyante nga uh, wala gid kay income gabaklay lang dinila mo baklay lang mo nang usa sa pronto accident whereas katong mga sapian kinuha man sa school bus school bus na ila mga cars so vulnerable kaya ang mga low income uh, children no then access to education mo isa totong gi present ni uh, atong good reporter nga education about traffic no traffic uh, rules and uh, regulation, no? Kana mga traffic markings, traffic signs. We lack our our students like that, children like that, no? So, okay to nga, uh, doon na tayo mga uh, drills, no? 
uh, traffic drills, just like earthquake drills and any calamity drills no? to our young uh, children in school or at home. Now, uh, according to study again, that eight times more likely experience an intentional injury or death atong children who are in low income. So, what are the strategies on this? Uh, on solution nganong para to avoid this kind of uh, death or unintentional injuries. Number one is to improve our engineering pillars of traffic. Uh, the katong mga road uh, ayun na tong dalan. Dapat, uh, I'm introducing a uh, motorcycle lane or nanate bicycle lane. Segregate sa ako, no? That's one uh, strategy. Then education. Educate our young children about parents about uh, traffic laws and rules no? and for us another study for us legislator introduction of effective laws and regulations sa totoong uh, recommendation sa atong good reporter the chairman so that is my additional information uh, relative to the special report uh, mr chairman and my colleagues come up any further comments? Yes, uh, Councillor Jay, Squall. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, I was in Singapore. Uh, nag nag tuon me regarding sa traffic. And uh, sa ilang seminars, uh, ang mga bata nila dito sa ilang mga schools, since grade 1, naanaday na sila part sa ilahang curriculum, kanamurag sa ilahang kuan, uh, nga if teach good ang mga bata regarding sa kanang traffic, sa kanang mga trains, and everything. So, uh, suggestion lang na ako unta, nga sa DepEd, I think, uh, pwede sad na to siya nga i-apply uh, para ma-teach siya nga to mga kabataan regarding the traffic and uh, prevention sa kanang mga road accidents, no, nga mahitabo. We can prevent this if they are well informed. So, kana lang, Mr. Chair, dagan salamat. So, uh, there are suggestions coming from the good reporter uh, about some resolutions. So, I think uh, we should refer this to the Committee on Traffic for further study. And uh, with a note that uh, anang suggestion nga kung pwede ibutang tayo sa curriculum sa pag-eskwela, uh, ipasuroy na ito na itong mga main lucky DSRT na ipag Ipag maestro na ito kayo doon sa mga oras lang, di sa mga Sa mga eskulahan. Kani mga traffic signs, di ba? Traffic rules. May ka na. May ka na siya. Yes, Councilor James. Mr. Chen, alam ko idugang kay puro talagang iskot ka itong na ay paradigm shift sa, sa kaning traffic enforcement. Pero naamang ko po yung nag-PM nag sa ako. So ako nabantayan, tinood po, kaya ako man po ang giobserbahan, kaya dili naman ka, basta-basta mo to sa PM sa ato. So ako po, bali, naghimo po ko ug pag ka ng surveillance, tinood ko day nga, mismo ang batakan nga, gikinanlan sa atong RTA, wala diha, wala sila gloves, wala sila reflectorized vest. Gani, nanay, pila, pipila ka buhok na nablatter, nag, uh, nag, nagsulti po sila sa ako, nga, unsa man yung mga RTA, wala daw kuno sila reflectorized vest. So, Ato, pagpatuman man ka sa balaod trapiko, pero mismo nga itong mga personahe sa RTA, wala sila mga gears, wala sila mga gamit. So, unsa saan na lang na ito, ang magisgutog laing mga butang, pero mismo nga itong mga personahe sa RTA, wala iiladya. Tanawag ka ni Karon, kung mabantayan ninyo, may pa, at katong niagi na, ah, pero Karon, ang but siguro na si bago nga ipadala sa ila or i-issue, pero sa pagkakaroon, wala. Delikado ba yagin niya nga itong mga RTA, kay labi na kung gabi, labi na nga ting ulan karon, magmanumano sila sa traffic, dili sila makita, kay wala man sila reflectorized nga gloves o wala sila reflectorized nga vest. Isa siguro ni sa itong tutukan, sa pag-refer na ito sa maubaling taho, Mr. Chair, sa katong saktong komite kabahin ni ini. Thank you very much, Councillor James, Judith, Majority Floor Leader. Masya matumbuh ato na ni? Councillor Suzette is already smiling. Okay. So she's willing to contribute, but at the committee level. At the committee level. At the committee level. So, the Committee on Education and also Traffic, Joint Committee Consideration. Okay? So, 
Mr. Sekretari, Reproduce Matter itu di Proper Committees. Next supporter, Councilor Seno. It is an indisputable fact that Filipinos are well known for our strong religious faith. Even during the most trying times, when we are facing insurmountable challenges, the majority of us cling unto faith as our last thread, our last hope, our only light in what appears to be very dark, dreary, Tunnel. To our Honorable Presiding Officer, the members of this Honorable City Council, and to all those who are present in this August Hall, a pleasant afternoon to all of you. Today, I'm speaking to the members of this Honorable City Council to humbly ask that we pass a resolution or ordinance if needed that would highly urge or encourage all public and private hospitals within the city to provide a place of worship where anyone who wishes to pray, to connect with God, to mediate or clear their minds, to make peace with their struggles as an avenue to do so freely and comfortably. This measure makes it so that every kagayanon in our hospitals, either as patients, as watchers, or as family members who are troubled with the health challenges to their, of their loved ones, or even our medical staff who might be overwhelmed with stress of being at the front lines of life and death struggles on a daily basis, would have a safe space, a safe space in a sense that he would have a place where he or she can practice and exercise their faith in a private and dignified manner. Wherein they can be free to pray, to have a serene moment during what might be a hopeless and very challenging time. I'm proposing to this Honorable City Council that we pass an ordinance or resolution to that effect to call the attention of our hospital management administrators to knock on their hearts of those who can make this happen to provide for such a place of worship in all the hospitals in our city which currently do not have one sa katong wala pa kung ugali na apay wala although some may say so especially the non-believers that the strong belief in God may not have any direct medical effect on a situation, but as a religious country, we recognize that religious belief and the act of prayer are meaningful, especially to those who are facing great hardships or are about to lose a loved ones to disease. A person copes with hardship in many ways. The complexity of the human mind is difficult to grasp, but one thing is for sure, many people turn to their God for wisdom, guidance, and understanding. Providing a place where a person can exercise their religion through prayer is highly advantageous in a hospital setting. One who is either suffering from ailment or has loved one going through medical treatment could find much comfort in a place designed to bring them closer to God. Prayer is often last resort for those who are given everything or are about to lose everything. It is last hope of the hopeless and while it may not be scientifically effective, prayer can boast a person's will and holds them together when it seems that all may be lost. Oftentimes, prayer or mediation provides a ray of hope or at very least would clear the mind of a person going through a turmoil of his own hospitalization or that a loved ones. I humbly asking that we extend the utmost compassion 
that we can, our fellow Kagayanons, who might be facing great challenge in this phase of their lives, who are having a health and medical troubles, to lend them this tiny compassion of letting them exercise their faith in a more comfortable and dignified manner. We owe our constituents at least this act of kindness to help ease their pain in a meaningful way. As a member of the City Council, it's our job to make every Kagayanon feel taken care of. It is likely that the hospital already have ex existing chapels, Muslim, Muslim prayer rooms, or any other sort of area for quite time. In these cases, we propose that the hospital administration undertake to put up a larger and more noticeable signage to point people in the right direction. This should preferably be placed at lobbies or entrances so that visitors instantly know that facility is available to them. Kung ugali, anaanay ato ang mga chapel sa ato mga hospitals, at least signages na may balan sa ato ang mga katawhan sa dakbayan nga naa di ay chapel nga pwede nilang kaadtuan. Usahay mang good kung naa kita sa kasub, uh, kalisod, inuuragyo yung atong maistorya. Si Chem. If a place of worship does not have rams or wheelchair access, we should strongly encourage the administration to make the proper renovation so that everyone can enjoy the benefits of the facility. The encouragement to provide a place of worship favors no single religion. Favors no single religion, but instead promotes the freedom to exercise one's religion through a prayer. We would not violate the non-establishment and free exercise clause in our constitution. On the contrary, our proposal substantially strengthens the constitutional mandates by helping our constituents exercise their religion in a more accessible way. In fact, this is all secular. We are not promoting any single religion. Instead, we are encouraging hospitals to facilitate the free exercise through prayer of a person's religion so that they feel better about having to stay in that first place. It is important to remind this Honorable Council that there are several pieces of jurisprudence which affirms that as long as the proposed legislation is secular, then it is allowable under our constitution despite having something to do with the religion. Here, we are merely facilitating the free exercise of religion for the betterment of our constituents at the hospitals and not promoting any single religion. It is therefore a secular measure and one that I hope that the Council would wholeheartedly support. Another thing that I'd like to propose is that the periodic visits be conducted by the appropriate local departments to see to it that our measures are being implemented properly. Keeping a close eye on the hospital compliance will ensure that our noble intentions bear fruit so that Kagayanon would feel their spiritual needs are given preferential importance. To this end, while I humbly submit to the wisdom of this Honorable City Council, I sincerely hope that this matter may be given attention and be referred to the, comi to the appropriate committee. Thank you and good afternoon to one and all. Okay. Thank you for the report. Any comment? Ako mag-comment ko. Ining uh, gamay lang kay Sabi ninyo, kining religion is very clear sa atong constitution. There is a separation of state and the church. That is why sa mga eskulahan nga public Walay balao di ang magbutang kagsimbahan. Now, ila rin ang discretion sa mga hospital? Butang ba sila? Dili. But to impose that, you are delving into the realms of uh, conflict of the principle 
of separation of the church and the state. Ako lang na. Uh, dito sa Amerika, grabe dito. Datang-tango na lang, so help me God. Because uh, para walay, 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 walay tent of uh, any religious favoritism. Why? Dapat katungod di gatos ginoo di lang tanod to sila ako nang respetuhan pud ang ilang katungod. Yeah, everybody should be respected. Whether you believe in God or those who do not believe, who do not believe in God. Mo kana ang balaod sa mo kana ang the underlying principle why there is that uh, uh, constitutional mandate nga di ta manghilabot tanang religion. Yes, counselor, uh, ako lang na personal ako ana. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. President. Mr. President. <laughs> uh, I would like to understand that uh, Reverend John Michael Seno uh, was just uh, advocating, but uh, distinctly in his uh, prepared speech, uh, he announced that uh, there is no denomination, uh, there is no favorite but just a, a prayer room that uh, for anyone who will be in trouble because of uh, sickness, illness, and for a family member who in dire need of a place, a solemn place for, for uh, his or her uh, connection with, a, with an almighty, uh, there should be a place. And uh, I understand that uh, there are requirements and uh, there, there are already existing. Uh, for one, for example, uh, Marerena is uh, already has one. Madonna also has one. Uh, Jerbora? There is no area NMC has one. Uh, CU also has one, but only in second floor chapel. But uh, again, uh, that's the request of Counts Reverend uh, Michael Seno uh, to put directional signs so that everybody will know that there is a place for for that purpose. But again, atong city hospital na, doc. May ngapon, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Actually, previously we had our chapel near sa gate, uh, near sa gate. Unfortunately, nagrenovate No, from uh, now, as of now, we have our healing garden. Nai space dia ang murag ecumenical na not only for um, Catholics but also for uh, our bra Muslim brothers. Any interfaith lang sa. Na siya space na asa may healing garden pero it's not inon nga What do you call that? Space? Healing garden. Healing, healing. Healing garden as a okay. center sa Jer Borja Hospital. Pero as far as private hospitals, they have chapels. As far as CUMC Medical Center, um, Polymedic and Madonna and Mayarena. And NMMC has also a chapel mm. but um Jarbo, uh, wala ang atong tablon and as karon kay ongoing ang construction and Lumbia Hospital. Okay. Uh, may I continue, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, I underst also understand, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, the good Reverend Councillor John Michael Seno has uh, listened intently to the, to the wish of the city mayor that uh, a space should be provided for this purpose. Economical. Uh, para sa tanan. Kung gusto sila mabutang cross, okay ka po. Uh, depende. Uh, pero iyag yung gusto is kana yung sa tanan na to, public hospitals. Na ah. Uh, munang desire sa city mayor and uh, Councilor Sen as the chair of the uh, public works was assigned to to uh, perhaps facilitate 
And uh, mas maayog siguro. Kay matud pa sa mayor, naka-experience siya siya nga nakahilak yun siya sa sulod, sa kana nga solemn place. Sa iyang personal experience nga na na nakagawas uga at the same time tungod anang pagpahungaw sa iyang intercession uh, na ayo lugar ang iyang pagplastar uh, sa pagsot sa sitwasyon so i also agree with him and uh, all the words mentioned by the good reverend uh, John Michaelson he's trying to propose to create a, a religion committee but there's no religion committee but uh, considering that he's mentioning uh, hospital Maybe Councillor uh, Maria Lourdes Gani can also assist us and facilitate. Okay, uh, maybe we can refer this to the uh, Health uh, Committee, uh, Mr. Chairman. To Sister uh, Maria Lourdes <laughs> As I said, uh, I will stick to my... If I will be uh, in the back there, I will stick to my opinion that uh, we cannot uh, legislate something that would affect religious belief. Uh, so, refer to the committee on uh, health para pagtuon. Kung siya may button. Turks. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so, the last uh, reporter is Roger Jer Abadai. Once again, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Presiding Officer, my colleagues. Actually, this is just a well, FYI for your information. Twice already that I was a victim of uh, scam. First, uh, last 19th uh, uh, City Council, I was able to get one lechon, I was able to get one lechon, I was office. So, uh, many uh, told me that bayaran lang na para, but uh, for me, I, I cannot uh, tolerate uh, that malicious and uh, scrupulous uh, ano. Second, just October 20, while I was in my office, no, there were two, uh, there were two establishment who went to my uh, office. Lamir ba to kating panyud to ba? But to me, uh, kwa, no, order, nag order na sa kwa, no? one pundador, 650, shrimp, 260, tapos load wa, worth 1000, k. Okay. Kaning tagiya, uh, Jabas Grill, sa ako na ba ni? Wala ko sukad magkali na ning uh, lugar. Na, ang phone number is 09752824867. Sige nagtawag, patawag na ko, kung kinsan na nga po, hindi nagatubag. So, kung ikaw manggaling ni yung tagiya sa po, surrender na, kaya napaligiran ka na. <laughs> another, for a few minutes, there was another uh, one, delivery man. Nagdala na po doon kuhan nga, one black label. Okay, na to, di ba? Then, another one is buttered chicken. O shrimp, ha? Huh? So, pwede man to paliton, pwede man to bayaran, pero the act of doing uh, uh, is an act of uh, arising from malicious, type, uh, spiteful, and uh, unscrupulous kind of uh, act. So, we, I cannot tolerate that. I think some of us here also victims, no? So, dili mayo, dili mayo nga atong uh, sakyan, no? Atong bang just PTD kuan, pero I'm also warning those who are listening, no? Kini mga establishment. Nga, imagine, dili ni mo kaila ang customer, pangayuan pagka o load 1,000, very negligent sa mga kuan, no? Contributory sa mga uh, store owners, kano mga masugot na sila nga magpaludaan o 1,000, uh, magpa-deliver. Karon, di nila i-validate, nila i-verify. So, this is a warning, ha? Those who are listening, please, uh, Tell this, uh, no? uh, this is not a good practice. No? This is uh, uh, modus operandi of people who are just to malign. Siguro ako binuang magini 
Siguro na itong mga amigo nga ganala siguro magkansyaw o kanang kontra ba natos politika. And I am telling these people to refrain from uh, doing this. Nanara ba tayo bagong balaod ang uh, SIM card uh, registration? So good that this was already approved. No? I hope uh, this one cured it will stop this kind of uh, unscrupulous uh, act of our uh, people here in Cagayan uh, de Oro. So this is just to forewarn those who are um, scammers, no? And forewarn also all establishment with regard to this modus operandi. Thank you very much. So, klaro kayo. Wala niya aim na itong... Bisig na kibalo itong naghatag na kining rag mo ning hilig ni Kansilor. Marunong sa ito. Ha? Wala. Mag-iuli man niya kayo. So, uh, okay, so that was just a public uh, information and warning. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Roger. <laughs> yes, sir, we can now proceed with our. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Roger Abadai. May we proceed now to the agenda mm. proper? Mr. Yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Majority Floor. Thank you. Uh, for item number one is proposed resolution number 2022-125, returning to the Sangguniang Kabataan of Barangay number 22, the city. It's resolution number 2022-3, series of 2022, covering its supplemental budget number one for calendar year 2022, with an estimated income of uh, 825,137 pesos, with information that said resolution is operative in its entirety. We may ask the chair to recognize Councillor John Michael Seno. Uh, uh, Councillor Seno is recognized. I so move, Mr. Presiding Officer, Resolution Number 2022-125. Can I second? There is a motion to approve uh, item number one and duly seconded. Any objection? There being no objection, the same is approved. Move to our second and final reading. Motion approved. Number two is proposed resolution number 2022-126, returning to the Sangguniang Kabataan of Barangay Makasandig, the city. It's a resolution. Number 2022-1, series of 2022, covering its annual budget for calendar year 2022 with an estimated income of 2,902,437 pesos with the information that said resolution is positive in its entirety. Again, for the recognition of Councillor Seno. Councillor Seno. Resolution number 2022-126, I so move, Mr. Presiding Officer. There being a motion to approve item number two, duly seconded. Any objection? There being no objection, the same is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Motion approved. Number three is proposed resolution number 2022-127. Returning to the Barangay Council of Barangay number one, the city is to... Its city, its ordinance number five, series two of 2022, covering its supplemental budget number four, for calendar year 2022, with an estimated income of uh, 190,000 pesos, with the information that said ordinance is operative in its entirety. May we ask the chair to recognize Councillor Yan Lam Lim. Mr. Chair, everything is in order. I so move for the approval of purpose resolution number 2022-127. Second. Second. There is a motion to approve item number three in the agenda. Julie seconded. Any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Motion approved. Number four is proposed resolution number 2022-128, returning to the Barangay Council of Barangay Puerto de City, its ordinance number one, that's 2022. Series of 2022 covering its annual budget for calendar year 2022 with an estimated income of 18,066,300 pesos with information that said ordinance is operative in its entirety. Again, for the recognition of Councillor Yan Lam Lim. Mr. Chair, uh, everything is in order. I so move for the approval of purpose resolution number 2022-128. There being a motion to approve item, item number four of our agenda, duly seconded. Any objection? 
There being none, the motion is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Motion approved. Five is proposed resolution number 2022-129, returning to the Barangay Council of Barangay Kauswaga and the City's Ordinance number 1-2022. Series of 2022 entitled an ordinance declaring the month of May as Bulan sa Barangay and every first day of the said month as Adlaw sa Kauswaga. And every year thereafter, an appropriating funds from cultural and athletic activities to cover the expenses for all activities. With the information that said ordinance is operative in its entirety. Councillor Roger Abada is a member. May we ask the chair to recognize Councillor Roger Abada? Councillor Abada is recognized. Of course, this is my barangay. Everything <laughs> is in order and has uh, submitted all the required document. I move to approve this uh, ordinance. Uh, Number a resolution number twenty twenty two one to nine. There being a motion to approve item number five of the agenda, duly seconded. Any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Move to approve second final reading. No objection. Approved. This motion is approved. Number six is proposed resolution number 2022-130, urging the Globe Telecom Incorporated Smart Communications Dito Tele Telecommunity Corporation, Philippine Long Distance Telecommunication Inc., Converge ICT Solutions Inc., Parasat Cable TV, and all other mobile telecommunications and or internet service provider companies to construct or establish additional cell site towers or optical fiber broadband facilities in Cagayan de Oro City to hasten its economic development. Move for its approval, Mr. Chairman. There being a motion to approve item number six of the agenda. Julie seconded. Any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Motion approved. Number seven is proposed resolution number 2022-131, earnestly requesting the University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines, USDP, through its president, Dr. Ambrosio B. Cultura II, Ph.D., to designate the USTP Center for Artificial Intelligence to conduct the study entitled Autonomous Adaptive Traffic Monitoring and Management System in the City of Cagayan de Oro. Move for its approval, Mr. Chairman. There is a motion to approve na, uh, item number seven of the agenda. Julie seconded. Any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Motion approved. Number eight is proposed resolution number 2022-132, approving and or adopting the executive legislative agenda ELA of Cagayan de Oro City for the term 2022 to 2025. Move for its approval, Mr. Chairman. There being a motion to approve item number eight of the agenda. Julie seconded. Any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Motion approved. So congratulations to the entire membership of the City Council. This Congratulations is, uh, to the members of the City Council for the unanimous approval of our ELA. ELA. That's good. Thank you. Number nine is proposed resolution number 2022-133, adopting and approving the substantive and procedural rules to be observed in administrative cases filed against elective barangay officials before the Committee on Ethics and Blue Ribbon of the 28th City Council, Sangguniang Panglungsod, in its capacity as a quasi-judicial body pursuant to Section 60 the 6 268 of the Local Government Code of 1991 and the established issuances and jurisprudence on the matter. We will ask the Chair to recognize the Vice Chair, Councillor Jose Pepe Abo. Councillor Abo is recognized. The author of that uh, proposed ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to approve proposed resolution number 2022-113. Second. There being a motion to approve... Uh, uh, item number nine of uh, our agenda. Julie seconded. Any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Motion approved. So, kay tingog ni Councillor J. Okay, ang mubant kay si Councillor Joey. So, kay second. Kwan Something. Anyway, number 10, move. 
Oh, mana mana tu ah? Second no, final reading, oh. mana? Number 10 is proposed ordinance number 2022-52, changing the nomenclature of the vacant position, local legislative staff officer 1. Item number 51 slash SG11 to computer programmer 1, SG11 in the plantilla of the office of the Sangguniang Panglungsod Secretary, this city. May we ask the chair to recognize again, Councilor Yan Lam Lim. Councilor Lim is recognized. Mr. Chair, I so move for approval of 2022-52. Second. There is a motion to approve item number 10 of the agenda. Duly seconded. Any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Approved. Number 11 is proposed ordinance number 2022-53, granting franchise, open parenthesis, renewal, close parenthesis, to Mr. Alan Noel S. Bernales to operate and maintain the Bulwa Cockpit Arena, located in Barangay Bulwa, the city, for a period of three years, under the terms and conditions imposed herein, and subject to existing laws, rules, and regulations pertinent thereto. May we ask the Chair to recognize Councillor Roger Abaday. Councillor Abaday is recognized. Pursuant to uh, Section 740 of the uh, Codified Ordinance in relation to Section 6, Paragraph 2 of uh, PD449, the applicant uh, of the renewal of uh, franchise has complied mm -hmm. everything. And I move for the approval of this uh, application. Any second? Suspend. Monday. Any second? There is a motion to approve item number 11, duly seconded. Discussion? Okay. Councillor James Jones is recognized. Mm. Mr. Chair, I just want to preempt, basing mo, naana po yung reaksyon nung yan si Councillor Abbo. So, giklaro ko lang kang Councillor Abaday. Ah, uh, Di ba na abat, di ba na tay limit sa pila or kota sa kada distrito nga yata ako wala ko na sayo na gusto lang ako klaro kay para malikay na pud sa dili na sa maka magtutok na sa dili ta matanggong kung naabay mangutana ako kung naabat tay limit or okay ra ba sa matag district uh, mura ha akong kay mura pila naman ubay-ubay na mangod ako na bantayan nga atong gitugutan sa kada distrito so, katong ni Agi, murag lamang ang segundo distrito. Karon, murag ni lamang nagyod ang first district. So, pareha na ba? So, mangutana ko kung naabay limit. So, si Councilor Abaday. So, uh, Councilor Abaday is uh, uh, recognized uh, to answer or to comment on the question. Uh, uh, please read the uh, 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 PD449. No? Uh -huh. There are... Uh, Limitation, but the Supreme Court has decided, and the approval of the local code. There is now a gray area on that, no. But we will not uh, talk about that yet. Plenary. I think we will discuss that in the committee. This is a separate. That's a separate issue because the issue now is only the renewal. We have three, uh, four existing uh, cockpits, no. One from district two and three from uh, district one, no. And they are already granted franchise uh, by this uh, committee, uh, by, by this uh, council. So I think we will discuss that issue in the proper time, not this uh, plenary. Ah, uh, okay. So that's the answer. So, Councillor Dewey. Tito Jair. Well, <coughs> for the information of Councillor James Judith. Mr. Chair, again, for the record, I am not interposing any objection. And uh, as also manifested by good counselor Roger Abadai, that this thing should be delved into deeply more in the committee level. That is correct, Mr. Chair. But we are already in the stage of approving such franchise. Now, um, Again, I have no objection because cockfighting is allowed under the law. But I have some legal questions regarding this application. But it, again, it does not necessarily mean 
that I am objecting. Let me clear that out. I am raising this question for the purpose so that the Committee on Games and Amusement, the City Legal Office, and the applicants for such purpose for the issuance of franchise would know these um, legal parameters. If, you, if we try to read, Mr. Secretary, please, the provision of PD449 as amended by PD1310, you can, we can read here that only one cockpit shall be allowed in each or city or municipality, provided, however, that in cities and municipalities with a population of more than 100,000, it did not explain there that for every 100,000. So, regardless, kung pila population, 1 million, 2 million, Two cockpits may be established, maintained, and operated in the population, dua sa population, and one in each city or district, town district. In our situation, the legislative districts that we have, District 1 and District 2, that is cited under the legal opinion of the city legal office. Now, if we try to refer, Mr. Secretary, please, the in the zoning map of our city. That is the zoning map of our city, which comprises the population. As you can see, it comprises barangays 1 to 40, a portion of Nazareth, La Pasan, Kamamanan, probably a portion of Kauswagan as well, of Patag, and uh, Carmen, if that what it means. There is no um, Bulwa, Pagatpat, and Lumbia are not included. So, they, we can approve, the local government unit can approve two cockpits if within the population map, as what is shown in the screen and one in each legislative districts. So, uh, I am just raising and showing this, Mr. Chair, not to oppose any application or go against cockfighting or establishment of cockpits, for that matter. But I am trying to be consistent with my position that uh, this legislative body should we approve any ordinances must be consistent also with the national laws provided. So, in this case, I, all, I also know the, the owner of the said cockpit subject to this applic uh, application. May we know, Mr. Chair, if, uh, if we approve, may, may I know from the Chairman of the Games and Amusement if we approve this um, application. There would still be two other applications or cockpits in District One. So how do we how do we treat these applications and how do we go about these things? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So there's a question, and uh, is the chairman of uh, the committee on? Amusement willing to answer. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Presiding Officer. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Abu. So, thank you very much that you are not objecting. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, we have created a uh, technical working group to study this law and the local code. Because if you look at if you, if you read the provision of the local code, section 534, uh, this is also one uh, law that, you remember local code, it says that uh, it amends, uh, it repels uh, all uh, uh, laws prior to the approval of PD-449. Uh, uh, um, uh, after, after the approval of PD-449. Uh, uh, PD so, 
the approval of uh, local government code. It, one of the uh, probation is it repeals all existing laws. So that's the gray area. Uh, because the Supreme Court also got uh, PD Purpur 9 is not one of the law that, that was not amended by. So that is the thing that we have to, we have to settle down. Why? 1974, law. Sa una, municipality, or almost one million uh, uh, inhabitants. So that law become inconsistent. But that's why you have to try to study, no? But as far as the, uh, no? I remember that there are two pending applicants now. That's why you have to study uh, this. Uh, uh, but uh, this, uh, you know, this uh, cockpit uh, uh, gambling law. But since this uh, uh, applicants, are, they are already applying for renewal. As to issuance of precise, we are already granted. So uh, we cannot do otherwise because you have complied everything. And what you are showing the, the map, it, it was the uh, city planning who presented that, that Kage and Euro now is no longer uh, you know, is a highly urbanized uh, city so that will the old law become inconsistent the pd449 so that's why it needs to be amended no and pd449 that needs to be amended and uh, there is a robot considering mr chairman that uh, the uh, Councillor Abu is not objecting, so I move for the approval of this uh, immediate reaction. You will allow, you will allow discussion. Uh, uh, just two points, Mr. Chair. Um, the, the one mentioned by Councillor Abadai that all laws during the enactment of the local government code, all laws jurisprudence and regulations inconsistent with the local government code shall be deemed repealed. But the Supreme Court in the case of Tan versus Perea is very categorical when it stated that regard, um, despite the effectivity of the local government code, it does not apply to cockpit law of 1974, PD 449. So meaning to say the application of the, of the local government code does not include PD449. And secondly, Mr. Chair, since there is already a technical working group which is to be created or created already by the said committee, is it not deemed proper for us to wait for that technical working group to convene and study this, this matter so that um, later on, if there is already a finding or a study, by the technical working group, then we can now decide on how to treat applications, whether regardless it is for renewal, because what was said, this is for renewal, there is no problem. But again, this is a renewal of franchise. What was granted before doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be uh, approved now. So perhaps we can, if it is deemed proper, we can suggest to the committee on games and amusement to convene the said technical working group. And then, because if we convene the technical working group after the approval of these um, applications, then what's the use of the technical working group if we, uh, if we have already approved such applications? That's, bit, uh, that's all, Mr. Chair. Uh, before you answer, Councillor Abadai, let's listen first to uh, Councillor Gurley, Balaba, and you can answer. Uh, Oh, gaming, very challenging After gaming that. PD944. No, uh, Mr. 44. Four, ah? 449. Four, 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 <laughs> yes. Uh, as far as I know, mong good kay, uh, ang Cagayan de Oro City, isa pa na siya kadistrito. Uh, recently lang, 2007, nahimo siyang dua kadistrito. So, uh, kining, uh, siguro kinahanglan na to, uh, tanawo no ang history kung kini bang mga uh, cockpit arenas in existence ba ni siya at the time na isa lang ka distrito pa ang Cagayan de Oro o uh, is it 
uh, lawful din on our part na di na to sila i-grant ang franchise just because na pag-enact uh, at itong uh, 2007 na uh, Congress na separate aduan uh, nakabook districts ang Cagayan de Oro no we are depriving those na nato nang natagaan ng franchise kung di na to sila uh, kining uh, ipadayon tungod adtong pag separate na sa uh, uh, Cagayan de Oro into two districts so na ay balaod nga not more than four ang ato ang uh, uh, cockpits mo nang tulo karon sa district 1 ug isa sa uh, barangay Indahag. So, mo lang to uh, Mr. Chair, ang ako lang uh, siguro we have to look back sa ang history at the time 1972, 1970 uh, Mr. Chairman sa Games Councilor Abaday 94499 is 4499 1972 Yes, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just, uh, uh, this is terminate the discussion. This is the test of the local government code to exercise its police power and corporate power. So, because according to the local code, section 534 uh, declares that all general and special laws or decrees inconsistent with this code are hereby repealed or modified accordingly. Lahi sa mga version sa Supreme Court. So, why is it Cebu and other, Dabao and other, uh, other places, uh, they insist on their uh, pol police power and corporate right? They insist on the local, they use the local government code, not other law. Can we not also do that in Cagayan de Oro? Let's try. To hmm. test also the Supreme Court whether we are right or not. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's then, oh, okay. Uh, Councillor Ayan Martin. I am always an advocate leader. for uh, the, the, the use of power on the local government code. But uh, primordial to that is uh, it should be for the general welfare. And if uh, the pursuit is uh, charitable institutions that we uh, push, I don't know if uh, there are... Uh, proceeds coming out of this uh, our approval Mr. Chairman and uh, given to some charitable projects mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can have an oversight over the affairs of these operations uh, that's another view of uh, looking at it but uh, relative to the question uh, Mr. Chairman uh, I have read in the previous uh, opinions of the city legal office uh, that they concede with the uh, opinion of uh, what has been uh, discussed by uh, Councillor Joey Abu, that according to them, uh, Indahag is uh, Indahag and and uh, no, not Indahag. Two of the four existing uh, cockpits are considered urban, and the other two, Mr. Chairman, are for the first district and the second district. Uh, the geographical uh, uh, presentation is different from the uh, normal and regular geography that uh, we have as regards division of the districts, as regards the uh, declaration of the urban uh, barangays, because uh, there could be no way that uh, an, a, a cockpit will be uh, will be established in the urban barangays. That's why they re readjusted. Re they re readjusted some, uh, some areas that uh, are to be considered urban. I do not know if the city secretary has that uh, copy of uh, the legal opinion of uh, the city legal office. And uh, the one pre pre who prepared this uh, was uh, the city planning. Just for this, uh, just for this, cockpits, uh, Mr. Chairman, just to justify the existence of the uh, of these uh, four, of these four, and of course we have uh, approved on on the basis of the proposal. As to the question of uh, whether or not we will uh, lump and decide and determine whether if we uh, concede to only four, 
And the new ones, of course, will be excluded if that is the uh, policy. If that is the, uh, uh, the, the position of the city council. In other words, we should only have four. But if we consider that, uh, uh, like any other highly urbanized cities, that every 100,000 population, there should be allowed uh, at one. Uh, that's another uh, discussion. Uh, to my mind, uh, Mr. Chairman, that is uh, admitting that uh, inani nagid ang kagayan di oro. Mga sugarol nagid kayo kung ugaling iyalaw po ginatun daghan kayo. Uh, imagine, mag-prepare tag agenda every every session ang atong istoryahan derby. At, <laughs> atong istoryahan, istoryahan agri, commercial, industrial uh, derby. Uh, I hope uh, we come to senses and uh, let's decide. Uh, maybe perhaps uh, it's beyond already to the uh, committee's discretion. We will uh, create a committee of the whole and uh, determine at the level of the committee of the whole, not at the plenary, Mr. Chairman. We will allow Councillor Roger Abadai to chair the committee of the whole and decide during that time whether or not uh, we decide kaning inani ba? Inani ba ang atong gusto nga direction? Or admit to only four because that's the mandate that allows that is allowed by PD, by the presidential decree, because that presidential decree was not modified by the local government code accordingly. Uh, and another opinion is uh, it has been modified accordingly. So let's decide the fate of this uh, discussion, uh, Mr. Chairman. And uh, if we will not agree first on the renewal for item number 11 and 12, let's immediately create this uh, committee of the whole and decide whether or not unsa bagita didto bata sa opinion nga upat lang kay moy nakalatid sa kanang PD or didto bata sa posisyon nga every 100,000 hmm. i hope uh, all the members will uh, think of this as a measure to eliminate future differences uh, as regards the matter mr presiding officer uh, there is a pending motion any motion to defer? Because I will defer this and then create the... Uh, huh? No, yeah, yes, but... Uh, wala may objection? Wala say motion to defer? Uh, objection? Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Aga. Uh, Mr. Chair, since we have conflicting ideas and different interpretations on this ordinance. I call for the division of the House, Mr. Chair. Any second? Second. Now, uh, there is an objection to the motion, so it requires the division of the House. Those who are in favor of granting this franchise, Please raise your right hand. Renewal. Renewal. Voting in favor, Councillor Nakaya, Councillor Abadai, Councillor Pascual, Councillor Suset, Councillor Balaba, Councillor Yan Lamlim, Councillor Esparcia, Councillor Caliso, Councillor Gaani, Councillor James Judith, Councillor Morino, and Councillor uh, Seno. Those who are against the granting of this renewal, please raise your right hand. Approving. Huh? Huh? Renewal. Abstention. So? Abstention. How many abstain? Abstention, Councillor Swan, Councillor Imano, and Councillor Abo, three. So, uh, Reckoning with numbers, uh, the motion granting two thirds. Huh? Two thirds. Okay, now. So there being a plurality of two thirds vote in favor of granting the franchise. The item number item number ten 
Our uh, 11 is hereby approved. Approved. Move to approve second final reading. Second, I was waiting for the banging of the gavel. Oh. <laughs> Motion approved. Corollary to that, uh, Mr. Chairman, may I move to create the co a committee of the whole and uh, assign this committee with the uh, deliberation on the, the, uh, the uh, determination of the appropriate law on the, the PD and the local government code and uh, maybe at uh, that level uh, discuss and determine the uh, future actions of the city council. I move to create the committee of the whole and to allow uh, the chair of the committee on the games and amusement to chair this committee of the whole on specific uh, matter. Oh. Can we tackle that on the, uh, the proper time? Uh, or now? It, it can be done. Corollary, now? corollary to item so, 11. Okay, so let's uh, tackle this uh, immediately. There is a motion to create this uh, committee of the whole with Councillor Abadai as chairman. And uh, any second? Is there any objection? There being no objection, the motion to create the committee of the whole is approved. Number 12 is proposed ordinance number 2022, that's 54, granting franchise, open parenthesis, renewal, close parenthesis, to Mr. Rodrigo Gigo to operate and maintain the Lumbia Octagon Sports Arena located in Barangay Lumbia, the city, for a period of three years under the terms and conditions imposed herein and subject to existing laws, rules, and regulations pertinent thereto. Again, for the recognition of Councillor Roger Abadai. Considering that uh, uh, the applicant has complied all the requirements based on laws and ordinance, I move for the approval of this uh, ordinance number 2022-54. Any second? Any objection? There being none, item number 12 is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Second? Motion approved. Number 13 is proposed ordinance number 2022-55, approving the simple subdivision plan of Carmen Hillside. Homeowners Association, Inc., represented by Ms. Nelda U. Torino, covering the, an area of 11,339 square meters containing 80 lots located in Barangay Carmen, the city subject to the conditions imposed by the City Engineer's Office and City Housing and Urban Development Department. May we ask the Chair to recognize Councillor Maria Lourdes Gahani. Number 13. <laughs> the approval of proposed num ordinance number 2022-55. There being a motion to approve uh, item number 13. Julie seconded. Any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Move to uh, approve second final reading. Second. Motion approved. Uh, the results of the counting of votes on the item number 11, Mr. Presiding Officer, is 12. So may we correct the record? Ah, 12. It's 12. Ah, okay. So number 14 is proposed ordinance number 2022-56, authorizing the Honorable City Mayor Rolando A. Uy, representing the City Government of Cagayan de Oro, to enter into and sign the Memorandum of Agreement MOA with the Civil Service Commission Regional Office number 10, represented by its regional director, Grace R. Bilgado Sakiton, covering the secondment of Ms. Olivia M. Sakala, Administrative Aid 1 of the City Public Services Office, City Government of Cagayan de Oro, for a period of three years under the terms and conditions uh, stated therein. Move for its approval, Mr. Chairman. There being a motion to approve item number 14, duly seconded. There being no objection, the same is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Second. Motion approved. Second. We have for inclusion, um, Mr. Presiding Officer, as items 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. and uh, 22. Move for their inclusion. And 23. Okay, and 23. 23. Ah. Move for their inclusion. Motion to approve the additional items. Yes. Candid is approved. 15 is proposed resolution number 2022-134, electing Councillor Malvern E.A. 
is Parsia as additional member of the Committee on Public Utilities, Energy and Roads and Traffic Management, amending for the purpose resolution number 14200-2022, the city, 20th City Council Committee composition. May we ask the Chair to recognize Councillor Romeo Calizo. Councillor Romeo Calizo is recognized. Strongly moved for approval, Mr. Chairman. In a second? There being no objection, the motion of to approve item number 15 is approved. Move to approve second final reading. <laughs> motion approved. 16 is proposed resolution number 2022, that's 135, electing councillor Jose Pepe. S. Abu Jr. as additional member of the Committee on Public Order and Safety, amending for the purpose resolution number 14200-2022 City, 20th City Council Committee Composition. Again, for the recognition of Councillor Romeo V. Caliza. Again, uh, Mr. Chairman, my strong motion for approval. Okay, there being a Second. motion to approve item number 16. Second. Julie seconded, ba? Second. There being no objection, the same is approved. Move to approve second and final reading. Motion approved. 17 is proposed resolution number 2022 that's 136. Electing Councillor Jose Pepe S. Abu Jr. and Councillor Agapito Erilberto G. Swan as additional members of the Committee on Tourism amending for the purpose resolution number 14200-2022. We ask the Chair to recognize Councillor J. Roa Pascual. Councillor Pascual is recognized. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to approve uh, proposed resolution number 2022-136. Any second? With all my heart. There is a motion to approve item number 18, duly seconded. There 17, being no 17. Oh, 17. There being no objection, the same is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Motion approved. Number 18 is proposed resolution number 2022-137, that's 137, constituting constituting. The City Council is a committee of the whole to deliberate on, on the Cagayan de Oro City Executive Budget, General Fund, and Special Account Economic Enterprises for CY 2023 with the Committee on Finance, Budget, and Appropriations as lead committee thereof, granting the Honorable Chair of the said committee full authority to prepare the schedule of marathon hearing thereof by department or office or for this purpose suspending all committee meetings for the duration thereof except in cases involving measures certified as urgent and without prejudice to the submission of documents to the committee members for perusal. Move for its approval, Mr. Chairman. Any second? Any objection? Motion to approve item number 18 is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Motion approved. Number 19 is proposed resolution number 2022 that's 138. Interposing no objection and favorably endorsing to the Department of Education, DepEd, the establishment of the City Engineers Elementary School to be located at the site previously occupied by the Kaoswagan National High School in Barangay Kaoswagan. The city may was the chair to recognize Councillor Suzette Magtas Daba. Councillor Suzette Magtas Daba is recognized. Mr. Chair, I move to approve proposed resolution number 2022-138. Second. There is a motion to approve item number 19, duly seconded. Any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Motion approved. <laughs> 20 is proposed resolution number 2022-139, designating Honorable Albert E. Adeser Punong Barangay of Barangay 26, Cagayan de Oro City, Philippines, as amb Ambassador of Goodwill to Thailand on the occasion of the travel thereto on November 16, 2022 to December 5, 2022, as official of the IPSC Handgun World Shoot. 13, 19. 19. Ah, the shooter, mm -hmm. And authorizing him on official time to observe modern trends of the legislative body Thereat, akin to the City Council of Cagayan de Oro and other projects and programs of local government units thereat and highly appreciating whatever assistance and courtesy extended to him with respect to and in furtherance of his trip or mission under this resolution. Proponent, Councillor Edgar Cabanlas. Move for its approval, Mr. Chairman. There is a motion to approve item number 20, 
duly seconded. There being no objection, the motion is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Motion approved. 21 is proposed ordinance number 2022-57, authorizing the Honorable City Mayor Rolando A. Uy, representing the City Government of Cagayan de Oro, to enter into and sign the Memorandum of Agreement, MOA, with the Department of Health Center for Health Development, Northern Mindanao, represented by its Director for Jose R. Leacona, Jr., MD, MPH, CISU-3, covering the grant of one COVID-19 allowance, OCA, for the health of workers assigned at the City Health Office, the City, under the terms and conditions stipulated therein. Proponent, Councillor Maria Lourdes S. Gani, for Councilor her Gani recognition. Is recognized. Mr. Chair, I move for the approval of proposed ordinance number 2022-57. Any second? There's a motion to approve item number 21 of the agenda. There being no objection, the same is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Motion approved. Number 22 is proposed resolution number 2022-140. Electing Council Marlverne. A. Esparcia, as additional member of the Committee on Environment, amending for the purpose. Resolution number 14200-2022. For the recognition of Councillor Roger Abaday. Councillor Roger Abaday is recognized. Oh yeah, I love you. Due to the insistence of uh, <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Esparcia <laughs> to be a member of the committee. <laughs> I move to approve resolution number 2022. That's one for zero. <laughs> Any objection? There being none. The motion to approve item number 22 is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Motion approved. Number 23 is proposed resolution number 2022-141. Suspending the next regular session. No katawa mga K of the 20th City Council on November 2, 2022 in deference to the observance of All Souls and All Saints Day. Any objection? Members, move for its approval, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Motion to approve Please item number 23. <laughs> there being no objection, the same is approved. Move to approve second final reading. Motion approved. There being no other pending, move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, Julie seconded. Approved. Jim Jordan, if I win the cake. <laughs> 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 <laughs>